oh, a few years back, uh, I ran like 2 flat point 8 in an indoor 800 meters at Princeton University. And I was right on 40, and I was running with guys that were, you know, obviously much uh, younger than me, and I was on a relay. I was with three other guys that I used to coach at the high school level. They went on to college, and now they were post-collegiate. They, they were looking to get some times for the Milrose games and, and looking to get some times for the, um, the Penn relays. And I was in pretty good shape, and they asked me to run. I still remember who led that off, Kevin. Frankie Martorella. Frankie Martorella from Tottenville High School. And uh, he handed it to me, and we were in contention and everything. And I wasn't crazy <coughs> fast at the age of 40. But I knew that I could be pretty competitive. So first lap goes by, people are going by me and everything. I got maybe sticking like third or fourth place. And guys, guys with speed are going by me. I'm hanging in there. Go through the quarter, still hanging in there. These guys are starting to come back to me. Oh my goodness. Okay. Third lap, I really worked the third lap. The third quarter about a third lap of an 800, the th third lap of a mile, the, th the third portion. Um, um, of that cross country race, and I started closing on a couple of guys. And I remember so vividly to this day at Princeton University, Jadwin Jim coming off the turn, and there's a kid from Navy right in front of me. So I remember their distinctive uniforms. And I remember seeing off the track one of his teammates. And I'm coming up on his shoulder, and I'm about to slingshot him, so I'm, I'm about to put him away. And the guy from Navy with the gold N A V Y Navy, he's like, don't let the old guy beat you! <laughs> well, got up on his shoulder, and I buried that midship. I put him down. Okay? Two flat point eight. I was probably 29 high, 30 point, 30 point, 29 high. So the other thing is, you can have a long career in this running thing. All right? Uh, and I've had great fun traveling around racing with, with my, my friends and my buddies and everything, and, and going to camps. So there's a future in, in this great sport. So that, that's the two flat, two flat point eight story. Now, the Pete Leota story. Oh my. Pete Leota came to our school, and during the summer of their freshman year, we always run an 800, just to see what sort of shape they're in, okay? So he ran 339 point for his two laps that, that particular summer. At the end of his freshman year, he PR'd at 227. Yeah, nothing except nothing to write home about. Sophomore year, got 10 seconds faster, down to 217. And then junior year, there was a whole lot of people that he was training with. He started to train up instead of training back. And I think some of you might know what I mean. Some, some people want to go to the next group. Other people might want to go backwards a little bit, go, go to a group that they can be the superior guy. Okay? But Pete started to challenge himself as a junior, and he ran 203.8. Good run. Senior year, he had a more famous teammate who had, ended up going to the University of Kentucky. Uh, his name is Matt Frawley. Matt has all sorts of records back at our school. He would run 50.152, uh, 121 indoors for a 600, 229 point for 1,000 yards indoors. Uh, 3, 305, 306 for 1,200. He really wasn't a miler, but we got him into the collegiate invitational up at the armory. In his first mile, he ran 420 <coughs> point. So this kid, Frawley, is in Leota's race at something at the Catholic State Championships at a place in New York City called Icon Stadium. So the dilemma is in our, in our league and in our state championship, the Catholics, it's very hard to get guys into that first heat Frawley's already going to be in there because he's a 152 guy. Everybody knows who, who he is. They only let eight, eight to ten guys in the first section, and the kid Leota, who probably had run right around 159, maybe too flat uh, coming in, I had to fight for him to get him into that first heat. Okay? Long story short, there were a couple of scratches. He gets into the first heat. And a couple of nights before the race, I had a premonition. I had a dream. We already knew that Matt was going to be in there, and we knew Pete was going to be in there. And I knew Matt was going to, I just wanted Matt to go out and run hard. I'll tell you how, how hard he went out in a second, okay? But I, I had a premonition that Leota was going to win the race. First of all, he had no right being in the race. But I had a premonition that he was going to come off 
the last turn, like a <coughs> locomotive, do our slingshot drill, and I said, Pete, it's gonna, it's gonna open up for you, and you're gonna win the race. And he's like, he's a pretty nice boy. He had, he had confidence, but he's like, coach, Matt's in the race. I said, well, you'll have to beat him. You know, you just have to beat him. So, as the race unfolded, Frawley is the number one seed. He goes, he goes out way too hard. He goes out in 24 point, he goes out in 52 point. I believe he was 121 at 600. He's blowing everybody away. The kids from Chaminade, the kids from Florida Prep, uh, the kids from St. Anthony's, the kids from Kellenberg. Uh, and at the 600, and, and they let 10 guys in that first section, Pete probably was in about eighth place. This is kind of like, almost like the uh, Dave Wallace story from 1972. Gets up to the steeple barrier, and we always do a drill from the steeple barrier in, re re really driving home, and this is where I had the premonition. Pete starts this incredible kick. He's flying. He's absolutely, positively flying. He's going by the Chaminade guys, he's going by the St. Anthony's guys, he's going by the Florida Prep guys. He only has one more guy. He's going to medal, and also we had a chance to win, win, win the state championship that year, team-wise, so his points were going to be important, very important. But Frawley, with about 75 meters to go, starts to falter a little bit. With 50 meters to go, he, he's actually locked up in rigor mortis. He went out way too fast. Well, the seas opened up. Leona is kicking. He, he, he's doing his slingshot drill, and he crosses the line as the 2007 Catholic State Champion. Yes, and here was his time. Remember, he started at 339. And this story is particularly for those folks that maybe right now you're not the best on your team or you're not running great time. In that race, Leota becomes the champion. He becomes number one, 156.49. True story. 100%, he went from 339 the first time he ever ran an 800, and he ends up running a 156.49. So you might say to yourself, well, coach, that, that that's how, almost sounds like a fairy tale. It's not. True story, 100%. Last year I was fortunate to have some of my guys here, and they, 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 they vouch for it because it's one of the legendary uh, stories in our program. Well, how he did it was he started to really buy in. He started to really buy in. He believed not just in himself, he believed in the program, the coaching staff, but most importantly, he believed in his teammates. So that was 2007, where we created the culture, and we've had a really positive culture. And that's something that I really want to drive home with you. You need to be in a positive culture. Our sport hurts enough as it is, okay? So when the going gets tough, the tough gets going, but we don't want to complain, okay? We don't want to complain, we want to be positive, we want to encourage our teammates. And when your coach gives you a hard workout, I want you to embrace it. I want you to say, you know what, coach is really challenging me today. He's challenging me, he's challenging my, challenging my teammates. We can be really good. That comes back to being relentlessly positive. You guys can do it. So we want to buy in, we want to create the culture, and we, have, we, want to expect, we want to take full advantage of our special opportunities, just like Pete Leota did. So that was in 2007 with Mr. Leota. Then in 2008, we had a very special team. These are the 800 meter splits, best times from the indoor and outdoor season of 200 to 2008 indoor outdoor. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We had 12 guys sub two minutes. And then we had one, two, three. Four. Our 16th guy was at 202.8. Our 16th guy was at 202.8. Why does he even stay on the team? 
He's 16. He, he could rarely get on to even a good relay. So this is the A team, the B team, the C team, the D team. You know, it, it, the boy's name is John Rarick. He's currently at, um, at Liberty University. He could just, 2028, in, in most programs, you might be a star. He's the 16th best guy. Well, he, here's how it happens. You dedicate yourself to something. You have the buy-in. You create the culture. John wanted to be over here. And John worked very, very hard. As a matter of fact, John ended up coming to this camp just a few years ago. Okay? Just a few year, years ago, he sat where you sat. And at 2028, what I did when he was running that, I put him in our sectional championship. I put him with the 152 guy. I put him with the 155 guy on a relay. And he got to feel what it was all about. He got to feel the excitement. And he ended up being, the next year, one of our best captains ever. And he encouraged other guys to run fast. In fact, that year we ran about 10.09 for a distance medley, 7.43 for a 4x8. Uh, we won our local sectional championship. We were third in the Catholic States. Uh, there's something called the New York State Federation meet back in New York. We were top 10 there, which is a great, great accomplishment. And then he passed that, that gift, that special gift, off to others where they believed in themselves. So I'm going to dub you guys now am ambassadors. I want you to be ambassadors for the sport and just be positive and bring others along, just like this group of 16. They really, really encourage one another. And as far as I know, there's very few high school programs that have ever had 12 guys break, break two minutes in, in one year and then have four other guys uh, just, just just on the precipice of doing great things as well. So I, I always tell the guys, ordinary men make extraordinary things happen, okay? And when I say men, I mean women as well, okay? You may think you're ordinary, but you have extraordinary gifts inside of you, okay? I'm gonna take a quick, quick time out. Don't want you to hurt anyone. Ready, feet!